Praise the Lord, church. Can we all stand this afternoon? Isn't the Lord good? Let's give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Praise. It's good to see everyone at the First United Pentecostal Church here in Boonville, Mississippi. And if you're watching through media, we're glad that you're watching. And we're looking forward to a great move of the Lord, aren't we? We had a great service this morning, didn't we? Praise the Lord. I believe people were healed this morning. And I believe people can be healed tonight, don't you? Praise Let's worship the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're in a place of expectancy tonight to know that Jesus Christ can do something? He did it long ago, and you know, He did it long ago, He can still do it today. And I'm thankful that we can stand on those promises that He offers to each and every one of us. Worship, continue worship with us tonight as we sing. Amen.
sent Moses out to lead his people out. But Pharaoh's heart was hard. He thought he'd give them the right. So he chased them all out to the Red Sea shore. He thought he wouldn't have to worry about old Moses anymore. But Moses stretched his rod out over the sea. And the Lord answered Moses with a little gentle breeze. I can see Moses now with a smile on his face. Get it all the people of his general grace. I've got a feeling, oh yes, everything's gonna be alright. Well, I've got a feeling, everything's gonna be alright. I've got a feeling, everything's gonna be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Be alright. David went out to fight a giant, and everyone laughed at such a funny little sight. A little shepherd boy armed only with a sling, beside a bag of life seemed such a puny little thing. But David said, you come to me with spear and a sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. So he put out a stone, and he gave out a flea, and when he left his head, he had begun to see. I've got a feeling, oh yes, everything's going to be all right. Well, I've got a feeling, everything's going to be all right. I've got a feeling. Be alright, be alright, be alright, be alright. And now for the greatest the story of them all. Jesus was dying and hell had a ball. All the demons were rejoicing, they thought they had won the war. But soon they would not be laughing anymore. On the first Easter morning, when the sun woke up the
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can go ahead and be seated. I'm going to take a, a few minutes for our, for our ministry minute. I don't really have a, a title or anything, but what I do have is a $100 bill. <laughs> now, Brother Jerry, if I fold this $100 bill, could you still spend that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, if I folded this one hundred dollar bill again like this, could you still spend that? Yeah. Okay. What about if I folded it like this? You could still spend it if I wadded it up. What about if I just stomped on it and kicked it around? And could you still spend that? You want to know why? Because no matter what you do to this one hundred dollar bill, it still has value. Right? And just like the children of God tonight, no matter what you've been through, no matter how many times you've been stomped on, no matter how many times you've been kicked around, guess what? You don't lose value with the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And I want you to know tonight, if you're not a child of God, you can be because you're still valuable to the kingdom of God. No matter what you've been through, no matter how many times you've been kicked, no matter what happens, you're still valuable. Nothing changed because God created you. God knew who you was before you did. And tonight, I just want somebody to know that you are very valuable. And no matter what, God is on your side. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love, for your mercy. Hallelujah. Now, I would like, uh, we're going to do some, some prayer requests. Let's remember revival. We know we're seeing revival. We're thankful for revival. Let's just keep praying for it. And uh, we're thankful tonight that Brother Steve was able to be with us in both service. Praise God. Let's remember him, Sister Tony Delaney, uh, the Caradine family, Michelle Floyd, Rick Rogers, Jennifer Taylor, and there's just a list that goes on and on and on. But we know that we serve a greater God that can answer any prayer that we bring before Him. So let's pray right now. Lord, we come to You, Jesus. We're so thankful, God, for the presence that's in this place tonight, God. And we're so thankful, God, that you are a prayer answering God, that, that you can do above and abundant of anything that we ask. And, Lord God, we just pray for these requests that's been mentioned tonight and those that you know, God, that, that uh, may have not been spoken, but you know, God. And, God, we'll be careful to give you the praise for it and the victory for all that you do. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the.
But you know, it's when we reach up and we begin to worship him, and we begin to seek him, that he reaches down and touches our heart and life. Amen? Praise the Lord. This is coming. Let's pray at this time. God, we're so thankful, God, to be in your house. God, we're thankful, God, to feel your presence and your power. God, we know you're able, God, to reach down and touch these needs that we have in the service that were made mentioned. God, we pray that you'll touch this offering tonight. Bless it, Lord. Bless the ones that have the gift and the ones that have not. God, we pray that you'll move the rest of the service. You'll bless the ministry. God, you'll bless this quartet as they come to sing. God, we'll give you that praise and honor in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll get situated here in just a second. We recruited one tonight. Amen. Brother Bill, you got the word, so we're ready. Y'all worship with us tonight as we sing. Canaan's land is just inside. Those Islet got children. Forty years he led them through the cold and through the night. Though they said, let's turn back. Moses said, go low in Canaan's land is just inside. There will be no sorrow there in that tomorrow we will meet him by and by. Milk and honey flow, that is where I'm going, Canaan. Land is just inside. Though we walk through valleys, though we climb high mountains, we can't give up the fight. We must be like Moses. We gotta keep on going. Canaan's land is just inside. There will be no sorrow there In that tomorrow we will meet him by and by Milk and honey flowing That is where I'm going Canaan's land is just inside Though we walk through valley Though we climb high mountains, we cannot give up the fight. We must be like Moses. We gotta keep on going. Canaan's land is just inside. There will be no sorrow there. In that tomorrow, we will be here by and by. And honey flow. That is where I'm going. Canaan's land is just inside. Canaan's land is just inside. Well, somebody shout, praise the Lord. You may be seated momentarily. I was telling uh, Brother Clay Stolen, Stolen, I said, we stood all morning this morning. That's unusual. But you know, we had a great day with God. I'll get the mic to you in a minute. I'm getting a mess made. But uh, we had a very good, Brother Tyler did a wonderful job. There is no halfway. God will do it all the way. Amen. We're so glad you're here. And I had, uh, I'm just looking at something. Brother uh, Eric Bourne had a severe asthma attack. And he had to go home. Uh, didn't make it. And we will continue praying for him. I was going to preach out of Second Timothy. And the Lord changed my mind. Sister Catherine Hill. I'm going to blame it on him this time. 
I had used to, I use a lot of scriptures the same, a lot of titles are the same. And the reason I do is just I read and I study and I think about something to tie it to to keep it, uh, kind of keep up where I can know which one I've used. Sister Stewart, I don't think I've used these. <laughs> and if you will, turn to Acts chapter number 1. And uh, Brother Hysaw, you got into my scriptures this morning. I did not tell you that. But I'm going to Acts chapter 1, verse, begin at verse number 4. Being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they had therefore <clears throat> was come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto him, It's not for you to know the times of the season which your father hath put into his own power. But ye, see, that's me. Y'all say, that's me. Shall receive the Holy Ghost, the power that the Holy Ghost be a come upon you. And you shall be witnessing both in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and all other parts, all, all, other parts of the world. But let me say it again. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And it says, Ye shall be witnesses unto me both into Jerusalem, all Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts, parts of the earth. Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Thank you for standing in reverence to the Word of God. You may be seated. A uh, man goes to a tool store one day and hey, he wants to buy a chainsaw. I wished I'd got him to bring his chainsaw. Y'all going to laugh if I did. But uh, he went to buy a chainsaw and a man told him, he said, uh, I got a top of the line here. Man, you can cut a hundred trees a day. He said, a hundred trees a day? He said, yes. So he went and bought that most expensive one he had. The next day, the man brings the chainsaw back to the store. He said, it's not working properly. And he looks at him and says, okay. The salesman looks at it, grabs the chainsaw, and as he grabs it, he pulls the rope and it fires off. And I'm not going to make that sound. <laughs> but he began running. And that man looked and he said, what's that noise? You know, that's the way we are sometimes, that uh, we hear that sound. I heard people talk about Pentecost. You don't hear speaking tongues and all that. But let me tell you, there is a sound from heaven as that rushing mighty wind. When God comes into your life and fills you with the Holy Ghost. Some people don't know what it's like. Some people have heard, oh, I got the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, synonymous. But the Holy Ghost, it makes a change in individual's life. And that man looked and he said, there's power not realizing how much power was in his hands when he helped that, with that without the engine, but when he started, how much power was in that engine. But let me tell you, there's not enough power in this room that Jesus can't give you that you can't do something. Because I like that power. I want to use this title tonight, power. Power. The word power is used 269 times or 60 times in the Bible. Dunamis is probably the most prevalent. Dunamis is used 117 times in the New Testament. And that's where we get our word dynamite from. And uh, dunamis is not limited to healing power. It's not limited to healing power, saving, resurrection. It's got a lot, a lot all many things. So Jesus imparts dunamis to his disciples to equip them for evangelism. I don't know if I'm ahead of myself or what. I'm looking at notes, but I, I'm going to be changing some things around. But I got to looking. And some of us don't realize when we get the Holy Ghost, what kind of power God gives us. And sometimes we let that power set down and not use it, and it stagnates. Matter of fact, let me ask you a question. I heard this before I came to church. And I won't tell, I, y'all want me to tell you who done it? Our pastor. Our pastor made this statement. Have you ever run your car on empty? Have you run it on a quarter of a tank? I 
I'm hearing it all over the house yet. Did you know you're damaging your vehicle when you run it close to empty? Your fuel pump is, is cool by the fuel that goes through it. And you need to keep, sister, you need to keep your car full. Close to full. And we don't realize what we're doing. We're actually doing damage to our engine of our car when we do that. Some of y'all are grinning. I got a feeling you're guilty. But you know, when we're filled with the Holy Ghost, God gives us the Holy Ghost. He gives us something to use. Not to stagnate. Not to sit there. Not to run a quarter a tank. He gave filled you with the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about all the way up. And that's what we, we need to use the Holy Ghost that God's given us. There should be excitement if you've got the Holy Ghost. There should be something happening. You should be witnesses. What are you talking about? I'm talking about it should go into all the world and preach. Well, I'm not a preacher. Your life is a witness. When you talk around, people see you on the street. You're a witness. When people work with you, you're not telling those off-colored jokes. You're a witness for God. We need to use that power. Children of Israel was leaving Egypt, and the Lord told them, and I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it should come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. I want to hear that again. When you go, you're not going to go empty. I don't want to run on a quarter of the tank. I don't want to run on an empty. I want to run filled because God said you're not going to run empty. Scripture tells us, and that going back to the word dunamis, the disciples spread the gospel, and that same dunamis that raised Jesus Christ from the dead takes up at residence inside of every man, woman, boy, and girl that filled with the Holy Ghost to live inside of us. And what is power? Power is the ability to act and uh, produce an effect. When Jesus was raised from the dead of his own power, he appeared many times. He appeared with the disciples as he was preparing to return to the uh, glories of heaven. But he left Jesus some final uh, notes, instructions to the disciples. Jesus did. These instructions are the same for every man, woman, boy, and girl on this earth. He didn't ask you to be sitting here to Jerusalem. He's commanded to stay in Jerusalem and be endued with power from on high. The baptism of the Holy Ghost will empower every one of us because He gave them that commandment. And I, that commandment is for every one of us today to have the Holy Ghost. Let me say here, I wouldn't leave this building if I didn't have the Holy Ghost. If you need healing, I wouldn't leave here because the Holy Ghost is able to heal you. But I've seen people come in and, and be troubled and trialed in situations, and God deliver them immediately and fill them with the Holy Ghost at that moment. A number of years ago, I was here, and I don't think I was preaching. And this guy comes in the door, and you look at him, and you say, well, you know, that guy's got a lot of problems. He walked in, brother, and he, when he walked through that door, he came up and sat in here, and the, the altar service began going. The Holy Ghost began to fall. Isn't that what I'm talking about when the Holy Ghost began to move? We had to move of the Holy Ghost this Sunday morning. Somebody, I'm going to agree with you, somebody was healed. Somebody was touched. Something was changed in somebody's life this morning. And it can happen tonight, but he... He walked in here, and, and when we had altar service, he came and he prayed right in here. And I went down, put my hand on his back, and we began to pray. And uh, this guy, you know, I know he had a lot of problems, and we prayed, and I looked at him and talked to him, and we had a, we had a long talk. Next Wednesday night, we had a service, and somebody walked in the door, and I'm like the rest of you. I go by and shake hands. How you doing? Glad to have you. And I got to look at this fellow, and it wasn't the same fellow. He was changed. He looked different. He walked different. He talked different. What was it? He was filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Any man being in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. That's what happens when the power of God gets into a person's life. The Holy Ghost is going to change you. A number of us here have the Holy Ghost and knows what the Holy Ghost is really like with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. But so many in the world today both the church world and the secular world try to discredit the Holy Ghost, uh, the Holy Ghost baptism to make it though as what? Not really a necessity. And let me tell you, you got to have the Holy Ghost. you got to have God. you got to believe on Him. Somebody said, well, you can believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Yeah, you can believe in the devil too, are you saved? The devil believed, did you not? And he trembled. It's important that every one of us have the Holy Ghost. 
Well, I've got the Holy Ghost, Brother Wallace. Is it active? Is it a quarter of a tank? Is it a half a tank? Is it three quarters of a tank? Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? How does He do it? That's when we worship. That's when we praise. That's when we go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's why we witness. That's why we tell what God's done. We change our life. Totally changed. There's a man that went into it. It was a variety show. And a guest appeared. And he was a bodybuilder. <laughs> I ain't going to talk about you, brother. Without answering, we find that the bodybuilder was asked, what do you use those muscles for? And the bodybuilder didn't say a word. And he just stood there and he did all that flexing. Brother Soden will not do that. <laughs> and then he went on and the crowd, I think it must have been women, began to say, yeah, yeah. You know, and again, they asked him, said, what do you do with those muscles? And boy, that crowd became ecstatic. Boy, they were shouting and carrying on. And they asked him three times, what do you do with all those muscles? And the bodybuilder just sat there, silent, had no answer. And then the man with all the power, his power had no purpose rather than to show and be attention to himself. The power. How many spirit-filled Christians are like that today? How many is really like that? Think about it. We should use that power, not... But we should use the power of the Holy Ghost that He's given us. And Sister Karen there in Jeffertown High School, you are witness to those children. There is the power of the Holy Ghost that God loses in your life. And we look around us, all of us that works in the secular world, and, you know, it's the power of the Holy Ghost. He sent to empower us with greater witness of God than we ever had. How many here remembers before you had the Holy Ghost? Now, how many is the same person you was when you got the Holy Ghost you are then? You're not. So that's why it's very important. He told his disciples that they were already witnesses, but already been sent to preach and to spread the gospel and deliver a preacher from demonic oppression. They were already anointed ministers and uh, they had a job they needed to do to bring souls to the kingdom of God, but their witnessing lacked power. And that had been baptized into Jesus Christ for their salvation, but after salvation, Christ was baptized them for his souls. Oh, you can be baptized, but he also baptizes you with the Holy Ghost for the service. Again, let me say, go into all the world, all the world, and preach the gospel. To every creature. Every Christian should earnestly desire, every Christian should desire to seek after the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If we want to be greater witnesses, if we want to work for God, we've got to have that Holy Ghost. And you know that power is right here in this building right now. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by God's Spirit down here. And we have an opportunity today that I'm going to ask you a question. I'm coming to a close. Oh. Uh, but I'm going to ask you uh, just a simple little question. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Some say, I don't know what the Holy Ghost is. But you know, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Let's don't let the Holy Ghost get down and get it drab. Let's keep it on fire. Let's keep excited for God. Let's come to church expecting something to happen. Let's come to church and see somebody filled with the Holy Ghost. And that Holy Ghost is for everyone. And the promise of the Holy Ghost is for every one of us, and we are all commanded to receive it. When, the, when was the last time? Let me ask you a simple question. When was the last time you spoke in tongues? When was the last time you felt the presence of the Holy Ghost as you began to witness or to minister to the hurting? When was the last time you... In, not my note. You invited somebody to church. When's the last time you've been on your knees in prayer? When's the last time you sat and read the Word of God? You see, sometimes when we get that Holy Ghost, the power of God in our lives, we seem that we sit down and say, I've got it. You can have it, but I've got it. I'm happy. I'm not. My desire is the revival that we've been talking about. My desire 
is to see these pews filled with sinners. It's receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You don't have to wait an altar service to get the Holy Ghost. Our Holy Ghost can be at home. Holy Ghost can be right here in this sanctuary in song service. The Holy Ghost can be an altar service. The Holy Ghost is whosoever will salvation. So let me ask you again, what was the last time you prayed through until you felt the peace and the power of God all over you? If you believe it's not by might, but power, nor by the power, but by the Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts, things will happen to stand if you will. And let's seek for renewal of the Holy Ghost within us. See what God can do for us. Is anybody excited? Is anybody really excited about church when you come to church? Is anybody excited about the revival we're going through right now when you come to church? They should be excited when you come to worship with your brothers and sisters. They should be excited when we come into the house of God. They should be excited when people come to the altars and get the Holy Ghost. They should be excitement when we feel the mighty presence. And every day when we pray, they should be an excitement. Every day when we get up, we need to read the Word of God. Every day before we go to bed, we should read the Word of God. God should be our number one because He's coming back for a people that has made themselves ready. Anybody want to go to heaven? Now, we're not taking a plane load or nothing right now, but you've got to be ready to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. As they start singing softly, I told you I wasn't really going to be long. But do you desire that power? Do you want to boost start the Holy Ghost into you? If you need the Holy Ghost, if you haven't got it, I'm going to ask you to come up here. If you haven't got the Holy Ghost, would you come up here? If you need a renewal, all this power need a renewal, would you come up here? I want you to, would you raise your hands and start talking to God as you want.